In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friend. It's wonderful to be again to be with you. This is the In the Last Days program. And today we're going to speak about the Temple Mount Sifting Project with Aran Yardeni. Thank you Shalom. for being with us again. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for having me. You're welcome. So tell us a bit more, Martin. We had an interview with Martin and you are starting to speak about the shifting, Sifting Project. I know that is like there is so much <coughs> background to give to be able to go where you know, where you want to go. So now we want to know a bit more of what's happening, what you have discovered, what you think was, the, you know, like you, you had some ideas about the Temple Mount, but now it's a bit different so since you yeah, find... The Sifting Project started mm -hmm. um, in 1999. It was just when the rubble was bulldozed out and thrown in the Kidron Valley. Um, but it took it took us around five years to get uh, the license and all the the, uh, the logistics of the dig to mm -hmm. actually manifest. And in around 2005, we started a project nearby in um, the slopes of Mount Scopus, a place called Emek Tsurim, the Tsurim Valley. Mm -hmm. So we started the, in the Tsurim Valley. We started uh, the sifting project. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever in the history of archaeology took something like 4,000 trucks and sift them thoroughly. It's something that was never done. I told you before that uh, archaeologically it has no, no value once if you want to dig something, you dig it in situ, mm -hmm. in, its mm -hmm. situa it's in its place. Yes. Otherwise it loses context. So we actually had to invent a new method mm -hmm. uh, for, for to, to analyze this material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a question of a trial and error. At the beginning, we started just with, uh, you know, like gold the mining. <laughs> yeah, and, and, um, and we didn't find much. Mm -hmm. And it takes also a lot of um, energy okay. and power, manpower to do mm -hmm. it. And but slowly, slowly, we came to understand and we've developed a method where first we, we got a machine that will sift according to size. So it would be, you know, things that are above uh, four millimeters, things that are according to the size. Mm -hmm. um, there, is, there would be medium, which would be more than 20 centimeters, mm -hmm. and less than 20, and large. And we have, we have, it starts, the sifting project starts from this tiny, tiny coins, uh, come all the way to... Mm -hmm pillars and, and columns and, and architectural elements that are really big and heavy. So this machine would do the first part. Again, we had to adjust it that things won't break in the way in, the, mm -hmm. in them. And, but then most of the material is uh, very, very small pieces that are uh, covered with dirt or it's full of dirt. And here comes, we, we have uh, started um, a process that is called wet sifting. Mm -hmm. And uh, wet sifting is uh, we, we first soak the mud and, and the artifacts in water. Later on, pour it on screens, wash it with strong pressure of water, mm -hmm. and then harvest the material just looking very, very slowly going through it. <clears throat> Another big problem that we had mm -hmm. was that it took ages. To, to do it, you know, it's uh, for a quarter of a bucket, it will take you, after a good training, it mm -hmm. will take you 20 to 30 minutes to do. Mm -hmm. And we have lots and lots of trucks. You said 40, 400 to 400 five. trucks. Yeah. It takes us, uh, we've done very, very little. We've done maybe in these days, maybe 20% of the whole load. After, I think, after uh, seven years of intense work. Yeah, so, so it's, it's still very little was discovered mm -hmm. from what there is to, to... Work of patience too. It requires patience. Another thing that we realized, it was um, organically, mm -hmm. uh, people just came to help. At the beginning we said, no, no, only archaeologists would do it. But 
we realized that uh, it's not uh, possible. We need thousands and thousands of people. So we have created a method where we have a group of people working and archaeologists, archaeologists, a group, mm -hmm. supervising them. It's been, I think, we had more than 70,000 people that uh, came and worked in the project. Some of them for a day, some of them for a week, some of them for, for a month or, or a year. Yeah, people are... Okay. And, and this, is, uh, this is great because people can come and actually retrieve and actually find, find things, things from the temple mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's actually helpful. Mm -hmm. In any other dig, I would never let you step in mm -hmm. because you will do more damage than... Help. You, don't know how to you will step on things, you would it's want like to dig and find, and you will destroy. But it's out of context anyway. Mm -hmm. So we can, we could uh, analyze it differently. So this is the method. But mm -hmm. what's more important and, and much, much more beautiful is uh, the artifacts. We found hundreds and thousands of artifacts that are telling us the story of Temple Mount mm -hmm. throughout the years. So and tell us, tell us. And before, before I'll tell you of, of the artifact itself, I need to tell you that this is the only artifact or the only archaeological uh, evidence that we have of Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. uh, we find, um, so it's, it's really hundreds of thousands of them. We still, we're just starting to analyze them. But uh, pottery, glassware, metals, jewelry, coins, um, um, furniture, uh, mm. plaster, bones, mosaic, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just a whole variety of things that you, you might find in an archaeological site, but, uh, but uh, not in, in context. Mm. A lot of them are museum pieces that, uh, you know, coins or, or um, that makes a lot of, of uh, impression and, mm -hmm. and tell us the story, the history of Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. So, also, I know that there was like first temple, second temple period. So, because it's all mixed, can you s know a bit what is the first temple and the okay, second temple? Okay, so, first of all, I don't know if uh, many people know and uh, are familiar with, uh, with how of the history of uh, the land bit. of Israel. Yeah. So, um, we're talking of... Uh, a complex history of uh, all the we have an Egyptian presence and uh, and you name it every every um, a power that uh, lived uh, that uh, existed in in the Middle East and in Mesopotamia mm -hmm. at that time had had an impression on Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the history is quite complex and intense and. And it's the lay the, from the Jerusalem is a 5,300 years old city, mm -hmm. so we have cavemen and Calcolithic era and Bronze Age and yeah, Middle Bronze, Late Bronze, the Iron Age and, and and the Persian and the Hellenistic and the Roman and the Byzantine and early Muslim and Crusade and and Mameluk and Ayub and each one is giving. Um, an imprint. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a war, or decoration, or, or uh, construction. And all this is embedded in the archaeology. To be an archaeologist in Jerusalem is to tackle all these periods and, mm -hmm. and find your way in it. The first and most important question, as you mentioned, is when was it done? Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, and we have all kinds of tools to, to identify a period. Mm -hmm. uh, one would be, there are many of them. The, we have carbon-14, there are more, like, you send it to a lab and it comes back with a date, yeah? There are all kinds of, of uh, methods Mesa, to, yeah. to dendrochronology, wood rings, and all, yeah, I'm, I'm not going, it's too technical, I'm not going to go. Another method would be mm -hmm. typology. We're familiar with a type, yeah, no, uh, say that uh, a glass, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, in, in different times of history, the production is different. Mm -hmm. The quality, the style, the, mm -hmm. uh, and the same for pottery. So we yes, we can identify mm -hmm. different periods, sure. and uh, this gives us uh, a, a great information on mm -hmm. that period. So, for instance, what happens in 
uh, early Christian days on Temple Mount. What happens in the Byzantine era? We have a lot of historical sources. A lot of people come and describe and, and write and, you know, in their diaries, journey diaries, or the Bishop of Jerusalem. Yeah, we have a lot of that. But for the first time, we have an archaeological event, uh, evidence from Temple Mount itself. And we find a lot of activity on Temple Mount in Byzantine era. So it will be a mosaic, a mosaic and it will be the pottery, and it will be architecture, and, and thousands of coins from that era, mm -hmm. yeah, that are... Um, so were there a church <coughs> there for a while? Okay, now this, you're touching a very uh, crucial uh, point, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Jesus has predicted mm -hmm. that Jerusalem would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with this prediction? Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic. And we can see it's 17. And, yeah, yes. and it, it, uh, it has happened, and the mm -hmm. temple and Jerusalem were destroyed. Mm -hmm. For the Christian uh, people that came later, mm -hmm. for uh, Constantine and Helen, yeah, the, the early... Early the, Christian. Yeah, early, the early the, era. The, yeah. yeah, the Byzantine, what we mm -hmm. call. Mm -hmm. For them, they came and they saw Jerusalem is destroyed. It was a big, uh, it's, it's part of, uh, when you come to Jerusalem, you expect to see the prophecy of Jesus uh, manifesting. Mm -hmm. And so all the historical books mm -hmm. are actually telling uh, Jerusalem is, uh, Temple Mount is destroyed, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, on the other hand, when we check it archeologically, mm -hmm. we see that there is actually a lot of activity on Temple Mount. There are signs of churches and, and coins, and, mm -hmm. and this is, uh, it's very interesting. Houses? Houses? How, uh, houses. We, okay. it, historically, like if you would ask before the sifting uh, yeah. project, yeah. people would tell you it was a garbage dump and an area that was not, um, was not inhabited. Mm -hmm. But uh, after analyzing the material, we see that there is a lot of presence and actually a lot of activity, mm -hmm. commerce and churches. And now, how can you explain it? How are you going to explain this contradiction? Mm -hmm. For a Christian that comes to Jerusalem, now I'm going to propose something. This, we have published it in uh, academic uh, articles and all. But as a Christian that comes to Jerusalem in the, in the Byzantine era, comes to, to the Holy Land and... and the peak of the visit would be Jerusalem. He comes and he say, Temple Mount is destroyed. The, the temple that Jesus has predicted mm -hmm. is not here. The fact that there are other things happening on the surface is not uh, contradictory to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's actually, all of them will state it as a, as a fact, which will be true, but not describing the actual uh, what they see. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They describe, they relate to the temple. And so it's very interesting because uh, the, sifting, the sifting project is actually we're rewriting history in a way. Because what we find mm -hmm. is, um, is uh, some material that now can be reflected on the historical sources and try to understand them better. Mm -hmm. Because uh, historical so were sources... They, were they, I'm still curious. So yeah. Like, so you seem to say that they might have some churches there, but like, where they have just like houses? I mean, it's very big. A lot of people it's, think yeah. that it's a small place, but it's, it's quite huge. Temple Mount is a huge area. It's, um, uh, we say it, it's 144 dunams, mm -hmm. yeah, which is, it's fifth of the whole uh, compound of the old city. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a very, very big area. Um, the... Okay, in early Christian time, mm -hmm. the center of, of, of the city shifts to the Holy Sepulchre and the Caldo okay. and the Nea Church, and I'm going to things that are not really... Uh, Which is like the west shifts. side. Yeah, mm -hmm. it shifts mm -hmm. to the west, mm -hmm. and the temple is left uh, in, in, in ruins. Mm -hmm. It seems now that there is some activity there. It's mm -hmm. not completely dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, that it's not like it was in the time of Jesus. For instance, what we do actually, and this is another interesting um, way to go about it, we mm -hmm. do a statistical analysis mm -hmm. of the material, which means that we analyze it statistically. We, for instance, pottery, uh, mm -hmm. pieces of shards that were broken, we collect them, 
and we we um, we update it into a computer. We have a software that is uh, dealing with that, and uh, and then we get uh, data on each and every period, and we can compare it. So, for instance, I'll just give you. It's not final, and it's mm -hmm. it's really it's in the making. Uh, so I'm not going to stand behind this. Figures it's tomorrow it's going to change slightly. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. But in the time of Jesus, mm -hmm. the temple, we get from the time of Herod, yeah, we get 23% of all the artifacts. shards, all the artifacts 20 in, of, the, of the pottery. 23% is from the time of Herod. From the Byzantine era, it's only 7%. Yeah? Mm. Now, the temple of Herod stood maybe 70 years. The Byzantine era, yeah, is for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. I would say, four hundred years, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the period that we have Roughly. sampled, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we compare seventy years, leave twenty-three percent, a huge amount, yes, yeah. and a time of few hundred years leave very, very little. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? What does this mean? That there was more activity. There is a lot. Yeah. That's that's right. There is a lot, a lot of activity in the time of in the Roman era on Temple Mount. In the Byzantine time, there is much, much less. Mm -hmm. So, but here we have, uh, we have, we always, we everybody describes Jerusalem. We have a lot of historical sources, mm -hmm. Bible, yeah, um, right things that are uh, mm -hmm. associated with the Bible. The, the, Josephus? Josephus Plavius, mm -hmm. uh, we have, say, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all kinds of, of uh, and from other, uh, from later periods mm -hmm. as well, Crusade. So a lot of people describe Jerusalem. Here is the first time where we can actually um, touch. confirm, touch, uh, and, and, and analyze archaeological material and, and get the, a wider picture mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to share uh, two artifacts. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, uh, again, there are, you know, shards, we have collected 3.2 million. 3.2 mm -hmm. million so shards, costs. pieces, are in this data mining and this process of... of How much is it again? 3.2 million shards, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's a lot. And if I will have to talk of each and every artifact, we will not finish, yeah? We will not be able to... to it's not for this kind of uh, mm -hmm. interview. But I want to share two, sure. two artifacts from, fr that were found in Temple Mount. And uh, so one would be one from the time of uh, the Roman era, one from mm -hmm. the time of Jesus, one from the first Temple era. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the, the, so we'll start with, we'll start with the, the, the Roman. Mm -hmm. We found a coin. Mm -hmm. that is a half-shekel coin. Half-shekel is a term that is, uh, a, it's actually a weight of silver mm -hmm. that uh, every man... That to redeem? To redeem or no, it's a or contribution. To, okay. It's a contribution okay. to the temple. Okay. You, it's right. It's, uh, every man that goes in the time of Jesus to mm -hmm. the temple has to give half, a, a half-shekel half contribution. Okay. And and he, uh, a man above 20, uh, mm -hmm. he could, the, all the family comes, but this is the tax. Or Now, this money is used for the sacrifice on the temple and for actually the running cost of the temple. The temple does not belong to anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the community as a whole. And all of them have to contribute, but, and they have a share. It's theirs, therefore. You know, and it doesn't matter if you are a rich man or a poor man. You, your share is. That's why it's half. It's not mm -hmm. a shekel. It mm -hmm. just you have half of the picture mm -hmm. because, and the total, all the, all the people have owned it uh, fully. Mm -hmm. Now, these uh, coins are very, very uh, famous mm -hmm. because when Jesus comes to the temple, he is, uh, you know, he's furious with uh, money exchange mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he's. Is uh, the people in, in the time of Jesus has forgotten the, the actual essence of the temple, and they're more focused on the contribution than the than the, the, the temple the and the, the meaning of it and mm -hmm. um, the holy of, of the place. And so there is a very famous uh, scene where Jesus goes to this uh, people, the 
money changers, uh-huh. right? Why, uh-huh. why would be their money changers? Because they are collecting this half shekel. Mm-hmm. And he slams the, the, the tables, the tables uh-huh. and these coins run down the, uh-huh. run down the stairs. So you um, find one of them. One of them. I, I don't know <laughs> no, if that I know, was, I know. But no, I'll tell you. This is the, the it happens uh-huh. in, according to the New Testament. And it happened in the southern part of the temple, uh, of Temple Mount, of the complex. And this is where our material is coming from. And we found a coin mm-hmm. that it says on one side, Holy Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, it says half shekel. It's a silver coin with the, with the right uh, mm-hmm. measurement. And it's, it's one of a kind coming from Temple Mount. Yeah, you can you, you understand sure. the importance. Yes, of course. It's uh, amazing. It's, its value is, uh, yeah. There is no value. No value, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. It's an asset of, I would so say, humanity as a whole. Can you see it? Yeah, somewhere? yeah. Ah, okay, is so the all the material, this is really, really fresh. I'm telling you about things that we're actually, we're just starting to analyze and publish. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, these days in the Israeli Museum for safekeeping, or when we analyze it, but uh, it's definitely going to, to, mm-hmm. to be shown somewhere, but we're still, I'm, I'm sharing things that are really, really fresh, just, mm-hmm. just came. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is from the Roman era. Mm-hmm. I would like to share another artifact that was found, this is from First Temple era. So it's, it's Solomon's, <laughs> Solomon's temple. From the time, it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, actually happening after Solomon. So First Temple is a, it's a long period. It's mm-hmm. around 400 years. Mm-hmm. But starting with King David mm-hmm. and Solomon. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, at that time, mm-hmm. um, we, find, we found um, a bulla. You're familiar mm-hmm. with this term? A bulla would be yeah. Is it exactly like, okay. a an imprint a of a seal. Mm-hmm. So, and what was written? It's a piece of mud. Mm-hmm. And what we had on this uh, mm-hmm. piece of mud was uh, an inscription um, of the individual that actually made this seal. Mm-hmm. And it says, uh, yeah. "Your name is the name of stamp, the same in Hebrew." Okay, bull, yeah. Bull. We, in yeah. Hebrew, when we want to send... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, the same name. It's the same name, bull okay. and bulla. Okay. But bulla would be... I would Let me explain what is a bulla and then we'll understand. Mm-hmm. Say that uh, King David, mm-hmm. in his time, wants to send a telegram, a letter, mm-hmm. to, to, an, to um, an army post. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Say in the Golan Heights, a gshur or something. He writes the letter on a, on a canvas and he will fold it and, um, and, and then he calls his uh, messenger, his, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, um, somebody to, that will take it all the way. Mm-hmm. Before he gives it to him, he hands it, he takes a piece of mud. Here comes the, takes a piece of mud, mm-hmm. place it on the letter and seals it. Why would he do it? Why would he seal it in this way? To make sure that it's him. I mean, people know First that it's First of all, him. when it's going to get to that post, mm. they're going to see, okay, it's the king, mm-hmm. King David himself. But secondary, once you get it there, you know that nobody opened it mm-hmm. in the way. Sure. It's, a, it's yeah. like the wax, of the, it's a seal. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. now, um, and it's very, very rare to find this kind of things because it's meant to break. Once you mm-hmm. open it, it breaks. Uh, what happened in this particular case, this was a seal mm-hmm. that was on, um, the seal was burned. Oh, so there was okay. a fire. We yeah. don't know when and how. It can be maybe the Babylonians, maybe previous, maybe an accident. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a fire. And what happens to a piece of mud when it's, it's fire? It's it, cooked, baked. It's baked. Okay. It becomes pottery. Pottery. And mm. it, therefore, it can stay for many, many years in the underground of Temple Mount. Okay. So it is, <coughs> it is a bula. Can we read? Can they read on the bula? What, what so the bula, this, this, this reads. Mm-hmm. And it says, Ge'aliyahu ben Imer. This is uh, a very, very important name because it mm-hmm. appears in the Old Testament. It appears in the Bible. This Imer, the family, mm-hmm. is a family of priests that are doing their work in the temple. Mm-hmm. So here we have a priest that is doing some kind of administrative work. He's writing a letter or, or 
we tend to think that in that case he was closing some kind of a rag, some kind of a bag. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, this individual closes this one, puts his seal, and, and leaves it. Now, we, it's, uh, according to the way that the letters are written, it is dated to the 7th century, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, it's, um, the 7th century before the Common Era. Mm -hmm. And this is a time where the Bible is still in the making. It's still not fully... Yeah, it's finished. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So he, uh, this priest is doing uh, work on the temple and... and this is an evidence of, of uh, priesthood mm -hmm. activity in the temple of that time. But so when you think, it's like he didn't know that many centuries after these things would be fine. And we know so, about him. So next thing that happens, mm -hmm. there is a fire and mm -hmm. somehow it just goes into the soil of Temple Mount. And for thousands of years, yeah, for, for 2,700 years, it's in the soil of Temple Mount. Until in 1999, a bulldozer comes and lifts it and puts it into a truck. It goes all the way to the Kidron Valley. And okay. two students arrive. And then two students arrive and, uh, and, and we take it with our equipment. And it was actually found by a teenager, yeah? Uh -huh. a, really? a kid that was just uh, looking and suddenly he sees this tiny, tiny it's amazing. inscription. Thank you, Aaron. It's like we're well, in the story of the history on the Temple Mount and to show you that this his story, this is not like just in books, it's a reality. The Bible is real and God is real and we bless you from Zion here. Bye. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you in two weeks, same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.